Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, so I have a really fun video for you guys today. I have been wanting to do this for a while. Um, this one is going to be about how to choose a steel tongue drum. Um, I know there's a lot of people who watch my channel who are just getting into playing. So um, this is going to be the ultimate guide to how to pick the perfect drum for you. <laughs> So to start, the absolute biggest debate you're going to hear about in the tongue drum community is mass-produced drums, which are usually made in China, versus handmade drums, um, which are often made, there's a lot in the Russia and Ukraine, um, there's also a lot in the US and in Europe. Um, chances are you have a maker local to you, actually, because there are a lot of makers out there. <laughs> But we're gonna start off with the mass-produced drums, um, just because I want to start off at the bottom of the price range and kind of move up to show you um, how the quality really advances as you go on. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with this little guy. <clears throat> this is actually $25 on Amazon, um, which is kind of ridiculous <laughs> because it's a pretty good sounding drum. You can hear. It's pretty in tune, it's nice. Um, also, around the, I think, $50 range, you've got drums that look kind of like this. <laughs> um, and also, around $60 um, is this bigger drum by Harmonic Star. And this is also a mass-produced drum, um, but the company that produces it is in Australia. kind of a nice sound. Um, and these are examples of good mass-produced drums. There are mass-produced drums that just um, are not quite in tune or um, not as awesome. The quality control can be a little off when you're looking at mass-produced drums, unfortunately. So the next step up for mass-produced drums um, is when you get into bigger ones um, that are a little bit thinner. These have kind of a different cool sound. It's very fun. <laughs> um, you can also see bigger drums. These are about 14 inches in diameter. Um, and these are a little bit thicker, as you can tell. So they have a different sound. Um, and then you see ones like these. This one is about 12 inches, and that sounds like this. And those are pretty much what you're gonna find for mass-produced drums. Um, there are some companies that make overtone drums, which I will totally explain in a little bit. Um, but if you're looking for something cheap, between 25 to maybe the upper limit is about $200, um, then mass-produced drums might be the way to go. Another thing to think about is if you're looking to play actual songs, um, like if you want to say do a rendition of Castle in the Sky or uh, maybe the Zelda song, um, if you want to do something like that, you're going to need a drum with eight diatonic notes. Um, and that's really confusing if you're not into music theory and part of the way that people get tripped up about tongue drums. Um, but if you're looking to play actual songs, you're gonna need a drum that goes the entire octave. Um, so you're gonna want a drum in a major key. They're usually in either C major or D major are the big ones that you see. <laughs> um, and just verify that it has every note. Um, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then there's usually another one and it will go up and down. But that way you know if it has every number from one to seven that it will have every note in the scale because a lot of the more expensive drums do not have that because they're just made for kind of a different purpose, which we'll go ahead and talk about. So to kind of know a little bit more about independently made tongue drums, I mean, you need a little bit of a history lesson. <laughs> Um, the hand pan is an instrument um, that was invented not very long ago, um, 20 or 30 years now, um, and it got super popular, um, but it was also really hard to get a hold of, and they're also really hard to make. Um, so some makers started doing these tongue drums, um, which is based off the idea of the hand pan. And the hand pan was made to be this very meditative, um, quiet, intuitive instrument. 
Um, so you're supposed to just be able to kind of sit down and play really cool things on it. So the scales that they used on these hand pans, um, they're not your typical one through seven diatonic scale. Um, a lot of them are either pentatonic, which means they've got five notes in them, so they're skipping over some of the regular notes, or they're hexatonic, um, which means they have only six notes, which again, skips over some of the notes in your usual scale. So if you're wanting to play musical compositions, you definitely want a diatonic drum. Um, but if you want to just relax, meditate, and maybe some mindfulness work or play things with like a moody vibe or even improvise, um, these hexatonic or pentatonic scales are perfect for you. Now here's where it gets really complicated. Um, <laughs> there are probably thousands of arrangements of notes and probably thousands of names for these scales. So if you want to go ahead and listen to a ton of YouTube videos um, with different scales, then usually if you're working with an independent maker, you can ask them to make the scale that you would like. <laughs> Another solution to this problem um, was made by one of my favorite makers. Um, this is called the Idiopan. And this is a tongue drum that actually uses magnets inside um, and you can slide them up and down the tongues to change the pitch. So that way you've got a drum that can basically be any scale that you would like it to be. <laughs> so here's how the idiopan sounds. That's a fun one. This one is a 14 inch idiopan, but they do make them as small as six inches. So I'll put a link to those down in the description, as I will for every drum that I'm going to show you. <laughs> Here is another one. Um, this is the Gouda Freeze Bee. Um, this is kind of the lowest on the totem pole um, of the Gouda line. And this one is an arcane scale, um, and that's another hexatonic scale, so it's missing a note. Um, but it does sound really cool. And this one is about 275, I believe. And here's another one from an independent maker. This one is made by Cosmo Sky. And this is a maker in Russia. And although they do make regular tongue drums, like the ones I just showed you, um, this is another super interesting choice that you get to make when you are looking for a tongue drum. Um, as you can see, on this particular drum, there are slits cut in the little tongues. And you might wonder, why is that? Well, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> this is something that I tend to call an overtone drum. So remember, um, these drums are made to imitate hand pans. And hand pans, when you tune them, each note is tuned not only to its original note, but you also tune it to the fifth above and the octave above. And if you're not a music major or uh, know a lot about music, you won't understand that, and that's fine. <laughs> Basically, it just means um, the note really rings. Um, it has this really pure sort of picture uh, singers in a cathedral. That's what that sounds like. So these drums are made to sort of imitate that sound. Those slits that you see are cutting those extra notes, um, usually a fifth, sometimes an octave also, into the tongues of the drum so they have this extra resonance. So here's what that sounds like. You can hear that just hang in the air. So gorgeous. <laughs> um, this one does get up too expensive. It's about $450. <laughs> um, there are some mass-produced overtone drums, um, so you don't always have to get them from an independent maker. Um, this is one such. This does not have the fifths tuned in, but each of these tongues is an octave apart. So this is the lower octave, this is the higher octave. And by having those overtones on there, again, it gives that sound a little bit more depth. So you can hear that. Um, compared to a regular tongue drum with no slits cut in it. It sounds a little bit different. <laughs> 
So if you decide on an independently made tongue drum, um, you're going to have to choose a scale. And that's so involved, I'm probably going to do a whole other video on that. Um, but just be aware of that choice. So when you're looking for tongue drums, um, your first consideration should absolutely be what kind of music do I want to play? If you want to do improv, if you want to do meditation, if you want to do um, just relaxing music, you should definitely go um, for either a pentatonic drum and you can get pentatonic mass produced drums. This little tiny one for 25 bucks, this is a pentatonic drum um, and it sounds pretty cool. So you can just sit around um, and improv on it and nothing's gonna sound super off. It's gonna be pretty. <laughs> um, and if you would like to play um, like actual songs and follow along with sheet music or with the number notation that a lot of steel tongue drums use, you're going to want um, a, a tongue drum with a lot of range. So it's gonna have a lot of notes on it and you're gonna want it to be diatonic. So it has all numbers one through seven. If it's missing a four, if it's missing a seven, that means it's a pentatonic drum and it's not gonna work for you to play songs on. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you have decided um, that you would like to go with a pentatonic drum, then I think it is absolutely worth it to look into the independent makers. Um, not only the super popular ones, like most people have heard of the Gouda or the Cosmoskis, um, or the Rav Vast is like a, a really fancy <laughs> tongue drum. Sounds beautiful. Um, but I think it's worth it to look into the independent makers that are near you. Um, like I said earlier, there's bound to be somebody um, not necessarily within driving distance, but there's bound to be somebody um, who's fairly nearby you um, who will be able to respond to your questions and do exactly what you want with your drum, which is really cool. <laughs> That's my favorite part about independent makers. Not only are you supporting local business, um, but you're also able to really customize it to exactly the way that you want it, which is awesome. <laughs> However, there is, of course, a price differential to think about. Um, if you are looking at mass produced drums, then you can get a decent drum and um, with a decent number of notes for about $60. Um, and the high end of the price range is about $200. Um, but that's the low end of the price range for independent makers. Um, if you, for example, want one of the tunable idiopans, um, even there it's six inch drum, I think is about 150. So it does get a lot more pricey um, but again, you're paying for um, independent effort. Um, you're paying for better tuning. I think that's one of the biggest differences that you see between the mass-produced drums and the independent drums. But if you get a drum from an independent maker, um, then they have put the time in to make sure that they are perfectly tuned. I think um, within 10 cents is uh, what they say the human ear can distinguish and uh, most tongue drum ma makers from what I have experienced um, that's what they try to aim for so their drums all sound really good. <laughs> One more consideration that I really wanted to talk about um, is the weight and size of your drum. Um, so coming from the harp world I was kind of like oh bigger is better. <laughs> I want all the notes. I want the most giant drum. Um, yeah. <laughs> And that is not necessarily advantageous, again, depending on what you're wanting to do with your drum. Um, if you want to travel with it, if you want to like walk it over to the park and play some beautiful music out there, if you want to go hiking, um, I really would focus on the smaller size drums. Um, and a lot of independent makers do make smaller size drums. Um, Cosmoski makes a 12 inch size, um, and I think they make a nine inch size as well. Um, and a lot of other makers will also make those smaller sizes. Um, but another thing to keep in mind is the weight of the metal that's used. Um, since a lot of drums use steel, they can get really heavy. Um, for instance, this idiopan, this is 14 inches, um, and I believe it's made of steel, and it is hefty. <laughs> um, it's hard for me to lift it up. I do not think that I could carry this <laughs> for any distance, unfortunately. Um, but the Gouda Frisbee, um, I'm not sure what metal it's made out of, but it's a much lighter metal. It's um, 
barely smaller. I think it's 12 inches, so it's barely smaller than the Ideo pan, but it's so much lighter. So if I was super concerned about the weight, um, I would definitely email makers and talk to them um, before you make a purchase, because um, it's something to be aware of, because that steel can be quite heavy. One other thing that's really helpful to keep in mind, um, if you are the kind of person who thinks the Ideo pan sounds amazing, um, the tunable things, you can tune it to different scales, a lot of drums are actually capable of doing that. Um, I don't know of many more that are designed for it, like the Ideo pan is, um, but a lot of steel tongue drums are magnetic, um, and you can get rare earth magnets, neodymium magnets, um, and you can use those to change your drum to different tunings. However, <laughs> it's not all drums. Um, these really thin ones um, that are made in China are not magnetic. Um, some other ones are not because they're made with um, a different steel alloy. Uh, so it's always a good idea if that's something that you're really set on is changing tuning with magnets that you make absolutely sure that the drum that you are purchasing is magnetic. <laughs> So I hope that is helpful for you uh, when you're looking to buy a tongue drum. Um, I will put links to all of these drums down in the description. Um, and also, if you want to check out my steel drum playlist, um, which I'm going to put up at the end of this video, you will see reviews for a whole bunch of steel tongue drums that I have tried um, over the past several months. And you might get an idea of something that really resonates with you and that you really would like to have. <laughs> Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments because I love talking to you guys and getting back to you and I really appreciate all of your support. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. Thank you all so much for watching. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and click on that subscription button right up there. Otherwise, if you would like to join my Patreon or buy me a coffee, the links to those are down in the description. <laughs> I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.